Hello, everyone. We are back with our season 12 opener of Trashy Breakups. Hey, friends, we missed you so much. Welcome to season 12. I'm Alicia. My name is Stacy. We have something very special today. Lawyers! <laughs> It's not typically the reaction, but we really like these two. (laughs) Yes. uh, So we have partnered with Legally Judgy to take a look back at some of the more fascinating figures that we talked about last season and which they had talked about in their first season. They're rolling out season two, I believe, this week. We think you're going to love Alexa and Nicole just as much as we do. They're judgy. They're trashy. We talk about it all. Mm -hmm. Plenty of tea. A lot of receipts. A little bit of speculation. And a hypothetical, too. (laughs) So let's kick off season 12. Again, big thanks to Legally Judgy. Big thanks to you for coming and listening. We will resume with regular trashy breakups beginning next Wednesday. Don't forget you'll have your regular season 12 premiere of Trashy Divorces 2 this Sunday. And we'll see you soon. Hope you enjoy. So we are super excited to be joined by the Legally Judgy team, Alexa and Nicole, who will be filling us in on some of the most interesting and infuriating characters that we've talked about in recent memory, as have they. Trashy Divorces has a limited lens on some things, and we are always so curious about the legal aspects. We have found a partner podcast (laughs) for us. Hey, y'all, thanks for coming on to Trashy Divorces. Hi. Hey, guys. We're so excited to be here. Thanks Introduce for having you. us. Oh, you're so welcome. Introduce yourselves and tell everybody about Legally Judgy. Yeah, happy to. So I'm Alexa. And I'm Nicole. And we are the hosts of Legally Judgy, where we bring you the judgiest, juiciest legal topics in pop culture. Yeah, Which we love we, we love, love getting into celebrities' lives and hearing about their lawsuits and their fail-ins and how much money they owe. So, you know, we love the, we love the receipts. You know, there's there's never enough to know about celebrities, whether it's their pockets or lack thereof or their many lawsuits. <laughs> Attorneys do tend to like the receipts I have found. <laughs> yes. We yeah. love evidence. Our spouses love it too, as yeah. you can imagine. Makes uh, arguing very fun. So y'all are about to start your second season. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So we took a little bit of a summer break after a really good six months for season one. We said we're starting our season two, starting recording today. So we're going live this coming week. Fantastic. Excellent. Congratulations. And I just heard that means y'all have a lot of episodes for <laughs> our trash pandas to listen to you. <laughs> we do. How, how mean- can people find your podcast? We're on all major podcast platforms. So we got Apple, Spotify, Google, uh, Pandora, iHeartRadio. I mean, anywhere <laughs> you want to hear us, we will make sure we're available. Yeah, just call us. And up. if there's a platform we're not on that you want us to be on, we'll make it happen yesterday. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now that all the trashy niceties are out of the way, <laughs> let's get into the dirt. Let's Absolutely. do it. Love it. Let's get judgy. So I know you covered Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun and the battle over the masters of several of her albums. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could talk about like, what is going on with that? Does Scooter Braun not own the rights? Because now Taylor is re-recording everything. She's not licensing that music, is she? Help us understand. Yeah. So, you know, it's actually, it's a really long, complicated chain. I'm going to try and break it down as easily as I can. So, you know, Taylor originally was under a 13-year contract with her initial label, Big Machine Records. And so under that agreement, as is common for especially like really junior artists, she agreed to give that label rights to all of the masters of her songs for her first six albums. And they own that in perpetuity, which we always tell our Our friends means forever, ever, forever, ever. (laughs) And so again, it's super common. So, you know, later she tries, they try to renew this agreement to basically extend it. She refuses because they wouldn't let her take back ownership of those first six albums. And they basically say instead that for each new one that she makes, she can get ownership of an old one back. She's not into this, of course. You know, she can be a bit dramatic from time to time. Uh, oh, also, hey now, that just sounds weird. That, yeah, just sound, <laughs> that sounds like a crap deal on my end. For, a- 
Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not untrue. And so what we have found is that this might be changing for newer artists, but historically, right, record labels want to own as much as they can. Surprise, surprise. So especially like Nicole said, for up and coming artists, they'll often say, all right, we own all of the rights. And now I think there's a push that Nicole and I have been seeing for artists, one, just to become aware of what this means, right? So a lot of young artists don't understand what the impact of that is. And I feel like you're publishing. Right. And, 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 you know, that's where we come in, where we say, you know, I know that lawyers can be expensive, but it might be worth trying to get together some money to hire one, to look over a contract, to explain to you what that term means, right? Because you hear masters and you're thinking, well, what does that mean? A lot of people don't understand, but that means basically you own the right to sell the music, distribute it, or just keep it. At least the original recording. And so again, to Alexa's point, the practicality, right, is that labels have been doing this for so long because they paid for the marketing and the recording and the touring and a million other things. So they thought that it was a fair trade-off, but to your point, it's not, it's a shit deal. Um, pardon my French. And so, you know, Taylor you was can trying cuss to hear all you want. We huh? I was gonna say, can we do that here? Cause we do that on our place <laughs> in our place. So that's fantastic. This is going to go swell. Yeah. We, are fl- we are fluent French speakers. As <laughs> oh. all of I knew pandas, we were going to get along. All of the pandas can tell you. I <laughs> uh, love it. So, so basically she ends up leaving that label. She goes to Republic records where they're basically willing to give her equity and control of her new music in the interim. As most people know, she's kind of feuding with Scooter Braun, right? And she's got this beef with him because of Kanye and Kanye being one of Scooter's artists, as well as him working with Justin Bieber and Justin kind of taunting Taylor via uh, social media with Scooter. So it's a longstanding feud. But, you know, Scooter kind of continues to hype up that feud by then buying her original label, Big Machine. So then he thereby owns all of her six original albums. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So is Taylor going in and re-recording those to make new masters that she owns? Yeah, good question. So basically, important to note here that Scooter actually sold that record label to somebody else. So he's not (laughs) directly, he's not, he's not directly involved anymore, but he probably still makes a profit. So a lot of times, even if you're not the rights holder anymore in this, you know, entertainment music world of ours, you'll still probably get a percentage of the profits, Mm -hmm. which is probably why, you know, if we had to guess, although we don't have Taylor on speed dial, not yet anyway, (laughs) but if we did, we'd ask her. And I'm guessing that that's what her problem is with Scooter still. But to your point, what happens with the original masters? Well, unless she is able to buy them from the new owner, she doesn't own them. And so she had something in her original contract with the record label that basically said that she couldn't re-record until a certain point in time, which was at the end of 2020. Uh So once that date hit, she was able to go back and re-record. And so that's why she's now doing that. Mm -hmm. And what that does, right, is it can potentially dilute the value in the original six albums so long as new listeners, her fans, go and support the new re-records, right? Because there was this whole question of whether that would actually dilute the old stuff or not. She has such a dedicated fan base that... She's been, you know, she's big on social media. Hey, everybody, if you want to support me, go listen to my new re-recorded albums. Don't go listen to the old stuff, right? And it's it's a very smart PR strategy. And so what happens is every time you go on Spotify and you want to listen to one of the tracks that she's re-recorded, she also made a point of making sure it's pretty clear which track is which. Basically like, hey, this is Fearless 2.0, for example, right? Because she already (laughs) re-recorded Fearless, the first album. And so she's saying, if you're going to go listen to it, go listen to Fearless 2.0, essentially. Right. And that then means that, you know, Scooter, the new owners of of those older of the original records are not going to get the profit. So what I heard you say is that the worldwide pandemic was actually good for one person. (laughs) Yeah, and literally that was Taylor there. Swift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's brilliantly said. Her and always Beyonce because yeah. Beyonce literally is always making money. <laughs> so you mentioned another name in there, uh, Kanye, y'all. Oh. A number one, <laughs> can you believe he got his album out. Uh, we, uh, yeah, uh, I know. Finally. Uh, isn't I, he suing over 
didn't he say the label shouldn't have released it though? Like, I don't, I have mess. not. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen that he's suing yet, but I know that he okay. had vocalized some issues with the label because they had basically dropped a version that he hadn't fully approved of. But in fairness, I'm sure like after four false drops, yeah, <laughs> some intern was probably like, I think he said yes. So press send. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it was just too late. And then you've got Kanye at your front door in the middle of the night. Yeah. We, we almost did. He, you know, we're in Atlanta. You guys are in LA. He was like haunting our sports stadium, stadium for <laughs> a few weeks doing listening parties. <laughs> did you guys go? We did not. No. <laughs> it's shocking to me. You didn't want so, to just sit there for two hours. Are y'all uh, placing any bets? How, how likely is it? Do you think the divorce between Kim and Kanye is actually going to go through? I doubt it. I've, I've got like a 10% likelihood of them actually getting divorced as yeah, I'll, I'll say 11% just to, just to get controversial here. Right. I like to create some waves. I don't, I'm just skeptical of the Kardashian clan and their ability to create the biggest PR stunts. I so can't part imagine of me, why they've shown themselves <laughs> to be so trustworthy in the, yeah. you know, you know, like even I, I think of the Scott Disick, Courtney Kardashian, Travis Barker love triangle going right now. And they're saying, Oh God, what God isn't talking to them anymore more. They unfollowed each other on social media. And I think that's just such, this is Chris Jenner playbook 1.0. I don't know is what this, you guys think. Is this Do you the, think they'll actually get divorced or? Ooh, um, at this point I don't, but I did when they first <laughs> announced it. It's <laughs> apt to change <laughs> day to day. I just feel like enough time has passed and Kanye's moving into stadiums. I, I don't know. Well, and she's showing up in Right. Her wedding gown to remarry him for performance art mm-hmm. or and then something. They attended yeah. the Met Gala as dementors. So right. I, it's very <laughs> odd. I went to dinner last night too. So, you know, it just, I just feel like there's not enough ego in the world that they can have. And so you really, they've really only got each other to compare to. I agree. Okay. So let's stop feeding into that PR machine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Smart. find another PR machine to feed into. Y'all talk to us about. Tom Girardi and Eric. Oh man, this is a good one. (laughs) Speaking of ego. Yeah, there's no egos about anybody we're talking about today. Um, No, I'm going to go humble people. I'm going on the legal record (laughs) and saying that I'm comfortable with that. Um, Yeah, Erica, Jane and Tom Girardi, where do we start? You know that? Okay, so as lawyers, there's a part of us that is very, very upset at him personally, right? He's not making us look good at all. I don't know if you guys have heard, but lawyers don't always have the most uh, trustworthy (laughs) reputation. So That's n- news to us, actually, I'm, I'm sure to our listeners too. <laughs> right. So basically, Tom is a very famous California attorney who worked on multiple consumer law cases, right? He was kind of known as the big white knight. He's suing drug companies, car makers, utility companies for just a wide range of negligence or even just overt carelessness. And he was winning like multi million dollar judgments for multiple victims of like pretty egregious uh, incidences, like plane crash victims, um, people who were burned um, from like gas leak explosions, people who developed cancer from various elements from companies just misbehaving essentially. Right. And so he really built up his name being known as that lawyer. Right. You think Aaron Brockovich, it's that he's the one that inspired that movie, right? He's, he's the Aaron Brockovich lawyer. So they, they based it on him. So, you know, there was some whispers over time that maybe something unsavory was happening, Mm -hmm. but nobody really talked about it. Right. Nicole, because the lawyer, like the legal community is tight knit. I mean, there's a lot of us, but I think the allegations have gone so far as, you know, because he was so big and making so much money, he had other people in his pockets and he had kind of, kept all of these claims at bay. And so people weren't really looking into them, but then, you know, starting last year, basically it was coming out pretty in pretty like rapid fire that he had stolen tens of millions from his clients and that he was like taking loans against future earnings. So basically a Ponzi scheme. And then of course there are the claims that he's giving millions of dollars to, you know, his wife, Erica Girardi's something company. I don't really think that anybody's figured out what the company actually does yet. Pop star yeah. career. Right. She's a very nondescript, <laughs> right. really low key kind of right. person who doesn't <laughs> modest, doesn't, doesn't try to get too much attention for her. She's not really a spotlight person. She's right. Very, she's very uncomfortable in it. You know, she <laughs> yeah. just poor thing. She's just cries every time there's a camera I mean, on her. 
waterproof mascara. Oh my Erica. gosh. <laughs> it is Did you thing. guys see that scene on yes. Real Housewives? Yes. Oh my. We What'd you guys, real quick pause. What'd you guys think of that? Did you buy it? No. Okay. No, not, not even a little. Yeah. Bit. So our follow-up question, because <laughs> Tom Girardi now is in a, he's in a conservatorship, conservatorship oh, yes. similar to Brittany. So his brother is his conservator. Let's talk about conservatorships and, but, but notably the state bar of California. Well, he's in the conservatorship because he claims to have Alzheimer's dementia, Alzheimer's, dementia yeah. Yeah. which yeah, my, my father had to like, I'm, in no way making light of that. It's just the state bar of California does not believe that he is mentally unsound in the least. He was, I realize things can change rapidly mm-hmm. with medical things, but like, come on, that is all the right. timing there is spectacular. If you're a guy who stole hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, for sure. I mean, everything was perfect timing right down to the divorce because the divorce was, you know, filed by Erica before the claims came out. And then the dementia thing start before the cases have really been filed. And so, you know, he, he's, he's no dummy. I don't think she is either. So I think that they kind of timed a lot of these uh, defenses, should I say, before anything meaty or the investigations actually began. So now he's got all of these, you know, claims, including the fact that his car apparently rolled over four times <laughs> as of the last Beverly Hills episode. Um, Something yeah. to keep him from like being prosecuted or found guilty. Right. I- just uh no (laughs) and that seems like a real good place to take a quick break let's hear from our sponsors this week back on the flip side we could all use a little sparkle in our lives and that's where victoria emerson really shines victoria emerson is a jewelry line driven by one mission to create gorgeous jewelry for everyone from earrings and necklaces to wrap bracelets and boho cuffs They've been adding some bling to women's lives since 2012 and are loved by celebrities like Jessica Alba, Vanessa Hudgens, Busy Phillips, and more. The pieces are designed with style in mind using genuine materials, including real crystals, stones, pearls, and gold. They're versatile too, with most styles offering multiple points to fasten so you can wear them as snug or as loosely as you want. They're easy to take on and off too, with the boho cuffs, magnetic clasp, and the wrap bracelets loop fasteners. There are also smartwatch straps, layered necklaces featuring multiple chains on one clasp for a layered look with no tangles. Want some sparkle in your life? Brand new styles just landed online for the fall season. Listeners can buy one, get one free on the entire collection by visiting www.victoriaemerson.com slash trashy and using the code trashy. Once again, that's www.victoriaemerson.com slash trashy and use the code trashy. This episode is brought to you by The Last Duel, a film by Ridley Scott, director of Gladiator. Witness the true story of one woman who defied a kingdom and made history. Starring Academy Award winners Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, Academy Award nominee Adam Driver, and Jodie Comer, who gives a performance critics say will be remembered come Oscar time. The script was written by Academy Award nominee Nicole Hall of Center, as well as Affleck and Damon. See The Last Duel, only in theaters October 15th. The Fall Line is a true crime podcast covering the coldest cases in the southeastern United States and occasionally beyond. We focus on the missing persons, the unsolved murders, and the unidentified does that don't get media attention. Empathetic and intensively researched, The Fall Line will take you on deep dives into unsolved cases that you've never heard of and make you wonder why you haven't. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. So yeah. let's 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 dial it back and talk about conservatorships because they've been very much in the news. Mm-hmm. Brittany, I think, finally has been freed from yes. hers. But um, as yeah, entertainment from, from her not, father, not quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or in, in her, <laughs> freed from the uh, current captor and maybe hopefully mm-hmm. in better hands. As entertainment lawyers, like lay down. What does a conservatorship do? I think Amanda Bynes had one as well. Has one, I believe. Yeah. So a conservatorship is basically a process where a court determines whether an adult is capable of making their own decisions or whether they're vulnerable to manipulation, et cetera. And so basically, depending on the court's findings, they'll assign an individual or a conservator or also an organization 
could be possible to handle some of your affairs and help like care for that adult's life. And so to even get into this conservatorship, somebody has to file a petition with the court to investigate the person of interest life and see if there's a valid reason. And in uh, California specifically, if you're requesting one for medical concerns, a psychiatrist has to testify to that effect. And so typically conservatorships are for older people or people with special needs or it's in, you know, really sensitive situations. And then in California specifically, there's also two types. There's one that covers personal matters and there's one that covers like your estate and your finances. So with Tom at this point, actually with Tom and Brittany, actually, they both have conservatorships that cover everything. So that covers the personal, whether it's like uh, doctor's appointments or visitors for Brittany, et cetera. And then it also covers their estate and their finances. And so, you know, Tom's brother, to your point, is the conservator for him. And so he's running everything from the bankruptcy to the law cases to figuring out attorneys. And he's now put him into an assisted living facility. On the other hand, there was Brittany. So she actually had two conservators at various points in time. It was Jamie and a number of other parties Right now, you know, Jamie has been pulled out from the finance side of things, but she's still got this woman, Jody Montgomery, who's running her personal side. So it can get really complicated, but long story short, it's really supposed to protect people who are, you know, maybe incapable of protecting themselves. But to Alexa's point, you know, and you guys' point, this has been a super hot topic item right now because they're super controversial, right? Like they've got a super high risk for abuse, which, you know, we've seen allegations of with Brittany. There's very little monitoring from the court once it's put in place. You know, conservators receive salary from the person that they're supposed to be protecting, which can be a conflict of interest. And then last but not least, they're really easy to get into, but hard to get out of. And you basically have to file another petition with the court and have somebody go back and do an evaluation or investigation to get taken out of the arrangement, which has a really low success rate. And we've obviously seen that over time with Brittany, right? Like she's been in this for what, 13 years now. And we're just kind of seeing some movement with her possibly getting out of the arrangement. So is there some cutout in like a, an exception in California law that just makes it even easier to apply it to young female pop stars, (laughs) actresses? Like it does, it seems like there's a preferential targeting that happens within the entertainment industry to keep young women in line. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not aware of any like young male stars who've been <laughs> yanked into a conservatorship and then fought to get out. Right. You're not wrong about that. Um, you know, California is known for being pretty liberal as a whole, but uh, they definitely don't have that on the books. But I think that this is where, <laughs> you know, in our podcast, we always will talk about the law, but even more importantly, we always talk about like the morality of the law, right? Because there's this assumption that the law is always going to be just and that if you go- <laughs> sorry, let's everybody just laugh. <laughs> no, that was good. That in practicing for my stand-up, I'm glad that, that joke ended. Um <laughs> no, but the, a lot of people think that, right? You're raised, I think we as a society are socialized to trust the laws because we assume that people have our best interest in mind when those laws are created. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. Um, it's I, you know, I don't want to get political, but I, I tend to think that it's the people who have the most to gain and the least to lose that are shaping these laws and putting them into effect. So to your point, I think that unfortunately for in particular Brittany's case, she was coming up in front of the media. She had all eyes on her and she was a young woman who basically fell prey to tabloids and paparazzis and basically just sexism, um, you know, and misogyny um, and people attacking her because she was slut shamed right after the Justin Timberlake Mm -hmm. uh, breakup. You know, he comes out with the Crimea River music video and people assume Britney cheated on him. And so they're there starts all the media speculation about how terrible Britney is and it continues and continues. You know, I know you both covered an episode on Britney and you talk about it too and how the paparazzi were attacking her and the tabloids are going after her. And it was true. And I think 
this is my personal opinion, but I do think that that was used against her. And there's nothing in the law that says anything to that effect. But I think they go, oh, there is a woman who's upset that she might be losing custody of her kids. And there's a woman who is trying to regain control of her life when she's been controlled by other people her entire life. We can't have this. So let's put her into a conservatorship. And think about it like societally too, right? We rarely see such heavy coverage of, you know, male stars having these like spin outs or fallouts from grace. And obviously like everybody is susceptible to mental health, you know, concerns. And we never intend to make light of that or joke about that. But we've seen those things occur and people like Aaron Carter, who is in that same, you know, genre of people or even Kanye in recent days. And Mm -hmm. the attention is just so much heavier when women have it. And so they are often in these situations where I think like Amanda Bynes and Britney Spears and even there was jokes about Jessica Simpson, Lindsay Lohan, you know, in Lindsay needing Mm -hmm. that like male guidance, let's call it, because they're always male conservators who are over their estates and telling them controlling their bodies and their lives, frankly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like, it's the dream of, for a lot of men, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to back up for just one second. Cause y'all started that out with one of the main risks of that. And you mentioned how conservatorships are conservatorships. Words are hard, are, <laughs> <It's> easy, <fine. laughs> are easy to abuse mm-hmm. as attorneys. What does that mean? I- explain to me what kind of abuse? Because it does seem like Britney's dad was doing something shady with their <laughs> books. So I'm assuming part of that is financial. Yeah. I mean, so, the, you know, the Britney thing is complicated, right? Like this week we've now before his dad, her dad, sorry, got pulled away from or suspended from managing the financial part. If you remember a month ago or around a month ago, he had basically filed to terminate the entire conservatorship, which would mean that Britney is completely free. There's no Jody. There's no Jamie. She can make all her own decisions. And I said it to say the allegations or the thought process behind him filing that first is that that would shield him from having to provide documentation, basically describing what he had been doing as a conservator for the past 13 years. And I think ultimately that's because he may have been doing some really shady shit and he was abusing that system, whether it was putting surveillance in her bedroom, which is a new allegation, monitoring her phone and her text messages, you know, the whole what her claim recently in court that or I guess earlier this year that he had forced her to have an IUD put in. And so those are the kind of things that like there was again, there was little monitoring from the court, but high risk of these people to overstep boundaries and do things that are really maybe not necessary to protect these people from whatever the court has found to be a concern in their lives. Right. And I, I would just add too, on top of what Nicole is saying is that you think about who the court places as the conservator of the conservatee, right? The person that needs to be cared for. It's oftentimes a family member and that family member is going to receive a salary from the conservatee. I think the thought is, hey, put a family member in charge because, you know, then we can have more trust. And unfortunately, oh, absolute. yeah, yeah, that's not the case, right? We see it here. Yeah. Possibly, you know, we always say alleged because we don't know those court documents were actually sealed for the longest time. And it's only recently that they have become public knowledge, right? And now we have even more people focusing on this. So there's more fact finding coming into play. And what Nicole said is very important. And this is the thing that we are going to be looking at in the coming days. But it's important to note that like she said, the reason why her personal lawyer is saying, no, don't terminate the trust yet is because they've now replaced Jamie with a new conservator over her finances who will step into the shoes of conservator. And that means that he will now have attorney client privilege with Jamie's attorneys because Jamie, right? Attorney client privilege means it, you know, we are lawyers. So when we talk to our clients and we say attorney client privilege, tell me what's going on. Anything that they tell us cannot be used against them, right? The court doesn't have a right to come in and ask us what was said, because that is the trust that we have as their attorney. And so if this trust was terminated, then all of that would go away. But now with this new conservator coming in, he gets to, he has the right to come in and talk to Jamie's, not Jamie's, but the conservator's lawyers who Jamie was talking to and go, let me see all those emails from the last 13 Mm -hmm. years. Right. And that's really important. And reviewing contracts that Jamie basically signed on Britney's Mm -hmm. behalf. Exactly. 
Exactly. And I think as an, you know, let's be equal opportunity, right? It's not just Brittany who's at a high risk for abuse. Even Tom Girardi is like, we don't, I'm not, I don't think, listen, I don't think the situation is kosher. And I have a lot of questions about what he did with that money. But at the end of the day, until he's proven guilty, right, he's supposed to be deemed innocent. And so there's a high risk for abuse and conservatorships like that because he's an elderly person. And Mm -hmm. so we don't know if he does have dementia, right? People could be taking money from him, whatever money he does have, or taking things from his house or abusing him physically. And so again, it's all because there's like little monitoring. And so any, anybody in this arrangement could be abused in some way, whether it's financially, physically, et cetera. Yeah. And this is why we like forensic accounting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you just shake out the couches at the Girardi house, you're set <laughs> for life. If you're a normie, I mean, <laughs> so let me ask y'all which legal battles should we have our eye on as trash pandas Mm -hmm. that may intersect with divorce these days besides the ones that we've talked about oh and should britney get a prenup 100 (laughs) percent, right oh yes 100 percent. we'll take your advice yeah you guys are lawyers you might as well be on that one at this point you guys are divorce lawyers so you (laughs) have just as much as us on prenups definitely not lawyers but yeah i hope that uh i hope that the conservatorship does not end before they i hope they require britney to have a prenup that protects Sam's shoe collection yeah, and Jeep <laughs> collection too. Okay. All right. So what else should we have our eye on? Yeah. Good question. I'm, I'm, I'm we're looking over our season two uh, schedule and I'm trying to find some messy divorces. I've or, got um, one. Oh. I've got a really good one. Okay. So Get Dr. In. Dre and mm-hmm. his wife are currently in divorce. Yes. And so it's obviously not done. They're still, I shouldn't have such glee when I say that, but this <laughs> This is where the trashy and judgy, we just work well. Yeah. You know? yeah. Hey, we wish the best for them. But until then, we can talk about it. <laughs> until then, we'll just exploit your, yeah. your life issues. But obviously that's happening, right? And the re- most recent allegation came out this week, I guess, that he's officially filed a claim over her possibly embezzling $350,000 from his business account or something. So this is definitely like bound to be messy and we will absolutely be turning <laughs> to you guys for all of the juicy background and tea and everything between. I'm just chuckling. It's so good. Stacy has <laughs> written a note. Yeah, she's <laughs> fantastic. I think we're going to have to keep in touch. Uh-huh. <laughs> Holy cats. We can't tell you how much we love you guys. Appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for helping us round out our legal questions. I got one more hypothetical before we wrap it up. Yes. Can't wait. It's like law school. Yeah. (laughs) Keep us on our toes. Yeah. (laughs) So hypothetically say that, I don't know, I'm perhaps Stevie Nicks Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I have an ex-boyfriend, Lindsay Buckingham, who six decades later, can't seem to let me go. Does uh-huh. California law provide any kind of recourse in this po- like alleged potential situation? You know, interestingly, so I had to, I, I will say I had to uh, really kind of dig in the banks of my head as I'm sitting here. It's, if I understand the situation correctly, right? He's basically alleging that she like got him fired from Fleetwood Mac. Is that right? Uh, Yes, but all of that has been handled. It's done legally. She's like, dude, you got yourself fired. (laughs) He can't seem to stop talking. I'm not sure who's doing a man who can't stop talking. Yeah, he's talking. (laughs) No, no surprise. Uh, No, he just keeps talking about how she's still into him and never got over it. That's awkward. Uh-huh. No, it's terrible. And he's That's really trying awkward. to patch it up with his wife who wants to divorce him. And he's on this national press junket. Like she never got over me where yeah. to where Stevie and the Fleetwood Mac manager have both come out. Like we don't normally talk about this, but Lindsay put on your pants, man. Like <laughs> this isn't a thing, right? I get don't over know. It. Get over if it. If I were her, I would really be talking to my attorneys and just. We were, order, man. we were Gag hoping order. that perhaps with the new billionaire space race, there was some provision in California law that would allow Lindsay Buckingham to be shot into the sun. Go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we, we have a fun segment where we, you know, we, we think about it where we're like, 
what are laws that don't exist, but should exist. And I think this is where all four of us need to get together and create some new policy Heck yeah! Um, because I completely agree with this, you know, um, maybe, maybe she has to go restraining order, you know, like you guys said, gag, like, just, just give up, man. It's just sad. I like mean, if she for wants, your own pride, if she wants to call us personally, we can talk about possible yes. defamation claims. <laughs> yes. Stevie, <Excellent>. hit up. <laughs> well, Elon Musk had a hard time this week as well. He is in the process he and Grimes are getting divorced yep. again. Mm-hmm. Up or Spoilers. Right. And, uh, he, his statement this week was like, yeah, we're seeing less of each other. We're trying to work it out. And she's like, I have a kid now and I can't wait to divorce this ass. So I love that, <laughs> love that a, for her. She said a little bit of conflict there. Like when one person of that romantic relationship doesn't get it after six months or six decades, I recommend we put a law on the books. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I would say six seconds, but you know, 60 years can do that. That's fine. I tend to be a little bit harsh in my punishments sometimes, um, especially when I would say like they're being a fuck boys is the term (laughs) of art, I think. So (laughs) it's definitely in Webster's this year. (laughs) It's going to be in the new California code. (laughs) Watch out for it. Hot off the presses. I feel a trashily judgy bill of rights coming on oh, that's so yeah. good. That's so good. <laughs> the next collab. I love it. Yes. Oh my God. We'll, we'll have like our 10 commandments. It'll be great. Hey y'all. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. This has been awesome and really informative for me. I know Stacy, you as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I am loving your show. I'm so glad to have come across it and you guys are great. Uh, and I think that I think our trash pandas will also thoroughly enjoy Legally Judgy. Yeah, Trash Bandits, check out Legally Judgy with Alexa and Nicole to get all of the legal stuff behind the scenes because these friends know what they're talking about. Oh, and there's so (laughs) much like housewives trash and stuff that's not (laughs) divorce related that they can get into and we can't. Yeah, if you need a little extra trash candy goodness, we recommend Legally Mm -hmm. Judgy. Yeah, you could be a trash so. panda and a judgy. We'll take it all. Between the, between the four of us, you, you guys are going to be holistic, ready to tackle the world every day. <laughs> I like the judgy trash pandas the best. Yes. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> now that's an army. <laughs> ah, you're, you're not kidding. Again, thanks for spending some time with us today. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for having us. This was absolutely but the most fun way to spend the day. And, you know, we're so glad to work with you guys and can't wait to meet some of your fans. Congrats on your upcoming season two. Mm-hmm. And until we meet again, friends, keep <laughs> Thank your hands you guys. clean, keep your hearts trashy and judgy. Oh, totally judgy too. <laughs> Bye y'all. Thanks for listening. Trashy Divorces is written and produced by us, Stacy and Alicia for Hemlock Creatives. You can contact us at trashydivorces at gmail.com or find us on the web at trashydivorces.com. Our art is by Sydney V. Smith. You can find her at sydneyvsmith at carbonmade.com. And our music is used with permission of Ratsy. You can find her at Ratsy's store on Instagram. Need more trash candy in your life? Our Patreon community includes some of the very best humans around, hundreds and hundreds of hours of bonus content, and fresh trash candy every week for all levels of support. You can join Team Trash Candy at patreon.com slash trashy divorces. Want trashy divorces swag? Check out our merch shop and Trash Panda Enthusiasm Society at bit.ly slash trashy gear. If you're interested in advertising with Trashy Divorces, reach out to trashy divorces at gmail.com. And last but not least, come play with us on social. We're at Trashy Divorces at Instagram, which Alicia mostly runs, Twitter, which Stacy mostly runs, and on Facebook, which we split. There's also a Trashy Divorces discussion group on Facebook where the trash magic never ends. Thanks again for listening, everybody, and spending your time with us. Until we talk again, keep keep it it trashy. trashy.